Apple surprised fans with one more 2020 announcement last week, introducing the AirPods Max, the first over-ear headphones Apple has ever made. But its unconventional looks and pricey $550 price tag have turned some heads. So in this video, we'll put the new AirPods Max to the test and answer some of your questions. How do they sound like? How do they feel? And are they worth it? Hi, I'm Michael Josh, you're watching Gadget Match. This is our AirPods Max review. But first, an unboxing. This is what packaging looks like. It comes in this square box with a photo of the AirPods Max up front and on its back. Here it is with its smart case on. And up top, it says AirPods Max. All right, the arrow is over here, so with a quick tug, we can easily remove the plastic cover. Now let's lift it up. Wow. Seeing a new product for the first time is always fun, but seeing a new kind of device for the first time is even more exciting. Ooh, love this mesh headband. It's currently in its case, which is actually wrapped in paper. So let's peel it off and take a closer look. This over here is a smart case. It's matte and rubbery, feels similar to the material Apple uses on its silicone cases. Let's take the AirPods Max out of the case. Love that clean metallic finish. It's very similar to the finish on the MacBook Pro or the iPad Air. If we remove these cardboard protectors, you'll see the mesh fabric that wraps around the cushions. Inside this packet is some documentation and a startup guide. And finally, there's a lightning to USB-C cable for charging. The included cables are a bit of a disappointment for a device that costs $550. Most noise canceling headphones will also ship with a headphone jack to USB-C cable for a wired connection to a phone with a headphone port. Apple sells this lightning to 3.5 millimeter audio cable for 35 bucks. It would have been nice though if it was included in the box. And while we're on the topic, I wish it came with a USB-C port instead of lightning but it makes sense since iPhones come with lightning cables and you can use the same cable to charge them. While it's easy to immediately want to compare the AirPods Max to the Sony XM4s and the Bose AC700s, from a build and design standpoint, they're really in a different league. Take for example these ear cups, milled from a single sheet of aluminum. While I never had complaints using these two and have never thought of them as cheap in any way, when placed side by side, the differences are pretty stark. Sony's XM4s are all plastic, Bose's NC700s at least have a stainless steel band. The frame on the AirPods Max are made of stainless steel too. Of course, while these are all premium materials, they do come with some trade-offs. One is weight. Metals are heavier than plastic after all, and the AirPods Max are more than 100 grams heavier than its competitors. I personally am not bothered by it, but I think it's something that really depends on the user. We'll talk more about it in the chapter called Fit and Comfort. The other con is that while pretty resistant to scratching, aluminum will dent when dropped. And unfortunately, a friend dropped mine and they already have a small dent on them that I cannot unsee. So don't drop yours. The AirPods Max come in five colors, space gray, silver, sky blue, green, and pink. While it follows the same general shape of over-ear headphones, the design of the AirPods Max is rather unconventional in a good way. The ear cups are oversized and they're one smooth slab of metal. Cold to the touch, clean and minimalist, no cutouts, not even the Apple logo. In fact, there's no Apple branding whatsoever on the device. That said, it's got Apple's signature written all over it. Remember the day when PC laptops came in a boring black slate of plastic and then MacBook Airs were a sleek and sexy aluminum finish? That's how I feel about these. 
They're like a trendy fashion accessory that delivers not just on form and function, but style and design also. Instead of the usual soft faux leather, the foam cups on the AirPods Max are wrapped in a mesh textile. Stitched on the insides are the letters L and R, so you know which side goes where. These cups are removable too. They snap off and on quite easily and are magnetically held in place. That's a good thing considering the cost and the build of these headphones. You'll want to hold on to them for a long time, but the reality is ear cushions will deteriorate over time. Thankfully, Apple sells replacements for $69 a pair. These are coming soon. While they're meant to replace worn out ear cups, when I first heard about it, I got excited thinking about all the different possible color combinations that you could get to customize the look of your AirPods Max. And so that you don't have to imagine, Mac Rumors has actually posted mock-ups of every possible color combination. Let me know which one you like best in the comments section below. I think black AirPods Max with blue cushions or white AirPods Max with black cushions are pretty dope. Finally, the Headband 2 is very different. Made of stainless steel, they connect to the ear cups via this ball and socket joint. It rotates this way and this way, allowing for a custom fit and a tight seal. It's also got telescoping arms. You can feel the resistance when you pull them out or push them in, and they stay in place once you reach your desired extension. Its open knit mesh canopy is designed to distribute the weight so you don't feel that your head is being squished, which sometimes can happen on other headphones. All of these design decisions combined help make these some of the most comfortable over-ear headphones that I have ever used. It's Tricky with headphones like this, both sound quality and noise cancellation are heavily dependent on getting a good seal around your ears. But you also don't wanna feel like your head is being squished. On the AirPods Max, it's a combination of many different things, from the memory foam they use for the cups to the canopy design on its headband. And over the time that I've used them, I really didn't mind having them on, whether that be hours of listening to music or an entire movie. There are no touch controls built into the cans of the AirPods Max. Instead, all physical controls are located on the top of the right can. Some will say that they wish the controls were on the bottom, but I really don't mind. They're actually easy to get to. Apart from a single button for switching between noise cancellation modes, it's got a digital crown, a larger version of the one that's on the Apple Watch. You rotate the crown to increase or decrease volume, it's also a button. Press once to pause and play, twice to skip to the next track, three times to go back, and press and hold to summon Siri. Whether you're watching movies or listening to music, the AirPods Max sound great. Not that I'm particularly surprised, considering how good my HomePods Mini sound. While I wouldn't consider myself an audiophile, I've reviewed enough headphones to know the sound that I like. And these sound great. I don't listen to just one kind of music. So for me, I like a good balance and sound that doesn't just blast in my ears, but envelops me. Thanks to its acoustic design and powerful 40 millimeter drivers, the AirPods Max have a great sound stage that wraps around you. In my opinion, better even than the Sony's. I also like how the lows, the mids, and the highs are well balanced. What I mean is that there's enough bass, there's enough oomph, but the higher notes are also crystal clear. One feature that's unique to the AirPods Max is something called spatial audio. Working in tandem with gyroscopes and other sensors on your iPhone or iPad, it does two things. Number one, it mimics what surround sound achieves. When I first tried them on with a Disney Plus film, I had to double check that sound wasn't playing via my sound system. It was that good. And I couldn't get the same from my Sony XM4s. Number two, it knows which direction the sound is coming from. So when I turn my head to the left or the right, the sound shifts so it sounds like it's coming from the direction of the source, which is wherever your iPhone or iPad is located. I just wish it also supported the Apple TV so that I could use these with my big screen TV. 
When it comes to noise cancellation, I don't have a lot to say except for the fact that these do a good job. But I can't tell for certain if they're necessarily better than the Sony's or the Bose, but from what my ears can tell, they're particularly good at balancing out low frequencies, like the hum of my heater or stove vent. They also do a good job of blocking off background noise when I'm taking the subway, but not enough to drown out the screeching of the train against the tracks. I can imagine they'd be great on a plane too. Finally, let's talk about microphone quality. You be the judge. The audio from the clips that you're about to hear were all recorded using the Voice Memos app on my iPhone. This first clip was recorded using the Bose NC700, which retail for about $340. Next up, we have the Sony WH-1000XM4s, which retail for about $278. And last but not the least, we have the AirPods Max, which retail for $550. Which of the three sound best? Let me know in the comments section below. Apple promises 20 hours of battery life with the AirPods Max, and based on my tests, they lived up to these claims. I tested with noise cancelling turned on the whole time, and volume set to about 75%. With the bundled lightning to USB-C cable, you can get an extra 1.5 hours of use with a 5 minute charge. I also wanted to spend some time talking about the fact that the AirPods Max doesn't come with a power button, meaning you can't really turn them off. When you take them off, media you're consuming will pause and your headphones will go into low power mode. When you place them in its smart case, it will go into ultra power saving mode. I was curious to see how much of a difference this makes. So to set a baseline, I listened to music for an hour and the battery drained by about 4%. I took them off and the battery level dropped by 1% after an hour. Finally, I put it in its case and battery levels dropped another percent. Part of me wants to say I just wish that it had a power button, but in reality, with any of the other headphones that I've mentioned, I don't really turn them off ever. What I do have an issue with is its case. Sure, it's the only Apple device to ship with one, but it doesn't really serve a purpose. They look good, albeit funny. I can't unsee the comparisons to a bra. And when you hold it this way, the way it's meant to be held, it looks like a designer handbag, but it doesn't offer the kind of protection that you need. Unlike the ear cushions, the mesh canopy isn't replaceable and is fully exposed with the case on. And if you look over here, some of these cutouts also expose part of the cups. When I travel, I have a lot of things in my backpack and I'd hesitate throwing these into my backpack the way they are, even with the case on. One thing that doesn't get talked about a lot, but I believe is very important, is being able to use these AirPods Max with multiple devices. If you're an Apple user, chances are you want to use them with your iPhone and your Mac and maybe even your iPad. Pairing is easy. Just bring your iPhone close and you get a prompt to pair. After that, all your other devices will automatically be paired as well. And switching between them is a breeze too. Get close to your Mac and you'll get this prompt asking you to connect. Play content and it will automatically connect to your iPhone. It's one of the perks of buying into the Apple ecosystem. Both the Sony and Bose headphones let you pair two devices, but based on experience, quick switching between them is not as seamless. And in case you're wondering, you can also use these with an Android phone, but the seamless transition isn't going to be as easy as well. So, are the new AirPods Max your gadget match? Let's review the pros and cons. For pros, I have build quality, design, the color options, the sound quality, noise cancellation, and the seamless transfers between Apple devices. For cons, we have its hefty price tag, its weight, bundled case that doesn't protect the entire device, 
and its lack of cables. I'm just gonna say it, these are excellent over-ear headphones and are every dollar worth its $550 asking price. But that's because I see them as a luxury product. For those who want the finer things in life, or for those who want to be seen, and for those who are more discerning in terms of their audio, tastes. So with that said, it gets our gadget match seal of approval. However, as much as I love them, I don't think that the AirPods Max are the noise canceling headphones that everyone should go out and buy. There's a lot you can get for $550 and there are cheaper options out there that sound good and are great at noise cancellation. Especially if you just want something for those long haul flights or to block off noise while commuting to work. That said, if you want to save up for them or if you can afford them now and you own a lot of Apple devices, then these are over ear headphones that you will be plenty happy with. And that was our AirPods Max review. I know the year is almost over, but we still have some videos in the bag waiting to be published, as well as several already lined up for 2021. You don't want to miss anything. So make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. And if you haven't, go ahead and subscribe and click that bell notification so that you get notified as soon as we upload. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Happy holidays, everyone.